Hey guys, Jerry here for Iceberg Creativity. We're going to be doing a Photoshop lesson today, and that is about smart filters. A few people have asked me in the past what a smart filter is and how they'd use it. Well, think of them as adjustment layers, but we'll get into that in the tutorial. It's funny because I'm actually doing a tutorial today. It's my birthday, so I thought I deserved a day off, but I had a bit of free time, so I figured, you know what, I'd give a nice tutorial for Photoshop. I was going to do one for Adobe's Premiere as well, but my buddy John has yet to give me the footage that I require. I'm not knocking him or anything like that, but you guys will get a Premiere tutorial when I get HD footage to work with. <laughs> Alright, let's get started with the Photoshop lesson, shall we? Start by opening up Photoshop if you haven't already, as you know I say at the beginning of all my tutorials. And open an image you want to work with. I have an image of a little girl that I found on Photo Express that I thought would be perfect for this tutorial. So I'm going to open it up. Now the first thing of note, this image is huge. It's in the thousands of sizes. So we gotta resize it. I'm gonna go to image, image size, I'm gonna size it down to 850. And I'm gonna hit OK. I'm going to double click my magnifying glass on the tool palette to make it the full size. Hit V on my keyboard to get my move tool back, even though we won't be doing any moving or anything of the sort within this tutorial. Now, smart filters need something special in Photoshop, and that is a smart object. By default, nothing you make, unless it's imported from Illustrator, will be a smart object. You have to convert your files over to smart objects within Photoshop. It's not very hard, it's actually pretty quick. There's a keyboard shortcut for it. You can right click the layer and just click convert to smart object. You can click this little drop down menu right here, convert to smart object. And of course you can go to layer, smart objects, and convert to smart object. That's what I'm going to do right now. Now. You can see that it has been converted to a smart object by the layer icon over here. It is also called layer zero now. That means you can edit this and go back and edit when you're done. So let's get in by applying our first smart filter. Now smart filters work like adjustment layers. You can add them, turn them off, and adjust them at any time you want. If you see that an, uh, a smart filter is affecting your image in a negative way and you want to turn it off or you want to weaken it, you can do that easily. That's what's great about smart filters. They don't destroy your image. They're smart editing rather than destructive editing. Once you apply a normal filter, that's it. You can't go back and adjust the value. But with a smart filter, you can. And that's why it's, it's a gorgeous tool for uh, photographers especially within Photoshop. So rather than tell you about it, I'm going to show you two of my favorite ones. Now this is probably the most favorite of all the Smart Filters, and that's Median and Smart Sharpen. So, the first one I'm going to show you is Smart Sharpen. I'm going to go to Filter, Sharpen, and Smart Sharpen. Now don't get the wrong idea, Smart Sharpen is just a normal sharpen tool. It doesn't give the name Smart Sharpen because it's a Smart Filter. It's just a more intelligent version of the Sharpen tool. So I'm going to click it, and when I'm presented with my dialog box, you can see that it improves the quality of the image just a little bit better. I want to make the amount much more noticeable. So I'm going to bring the amount up to 300 and the radius to 1.2. I'm going to remove lens blur instead of Gaussian blur and then I'm going to click this icon right here. This will save my setting. So say for example in the future I have an image similar to this I want to apply the same filter I can just save it. I'm going to call this uh, flower sharpen or flower sharper whatever <laughs> Actually, flower sharpen, sharpen rather. Okay, now I have it spelled correctly. I'm very tired, sorry guys. Click OK, and here are my settings, flower sharpen is there. I'm going to go down to it, and then click OK. And this is our filter applied. And over here in the layers, you're going to see something different now. Here under the layer is the smart filters, and under that is the smart sharpen. Now if I click the eye, it turns off. Once again, if I click the, uh, click the eye on Smart Filters, it turns off. If we have more, this will turn them all off. Now, if I want to adjust what, I'm, what I just added in the values of the Smart Sharpen, just double click the name and the Smart Sharpen dialog box appears once again. Since I want to leave it the way it is, I'm just going to click Cancel. But say, for example, I want to change the blending mode of the filter itself. You know, add it to Color Dodge or Soft Light or Lighten. You can easily do that by clicking these little slider adjuster buttons right here. And, the, and you'll be presented with this dialog box where you can move around to see a preview of your image. The girl's eye and these leaves look pretty good. So I'm going to change the blending mode to lighten. 
and the opacity to 59 to about let's say 49 and then I'm going to click OK you can see and a small new effect has been achieved on our image and once again you can turn it off or you can turn it on you might not be able to see it on the YouTube video but if you're doing this following along you'll definitely notice a difference now I'm going to add my final smart filter so I'm going to go to filter noise and median median is a great little filter if you can use it properly so I'm going to bring the radius up to about 20 I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to adjust its blending mode to soft light and I'm going to bring the opacity down to 75% now I'm going to turn off both smart filters there's the original image and there's the adjusted image with the smart filters and that's how you use them guys these are extremely efficient tools especially for photographers if you have a beautiful camera such as the Nikon D5000 like my buddy Ryan or the Canon Digital Rebel or you know the Sony Alphas and you edit your photos within Photoshop as opposed to Lightroom or uh, Aperture these are wonderful to work with you can safely adjust your images and if you don't like the medium filter on top of the smart sharpen you can turn one off and see the differentiating effects and really guys that's all there is to it that's the smart filter that's how you use them and that's how you adjust them i hope you learned something from this tutorial thanks for watching and the next tutorial i do will be a video tutorial for adobe premiere thanks for watching guys have a great day